Welcome. Welcome everyone. Welcome to the Las Vegas Virtual College Fair this evening. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I just have a few housekeeping items before we get started this evening. You will be able to use the Q&A button on your screen at the bottom um, to type questions to our presenters at any time this evening. Just a reminder, your camera and your microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. Um, and this is just one of the many sessions happening, so be sure to sign up for additional sessions. This presentation is being recorded and, there will, and will be available um, about a week at the same website where you registered. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to our presenters. First, you guys are going to hear from St. John's University. All right, dealing with technology there. <laughs> good afternoon and good evening from the East Coast. My name is Anthony, I'm here from St. John's University. So I'm just gonna run through a couple of slides here to kind of give you a breakdown of what we're about. So we have a couple of different campuses. We are located in the city of New York. The ones in red are the three different boroughs we're located in. So we have our largest location in Queens, New York with about 15,000 students. Then below that we have Staten Island which has roughly about 1,500 to 2,000 students. So depending on what type of environment you're looking for, we have two different styles. And then lastly, Manhattan's our smallest location, specialized for risk management, actuary science, and if you have an interest in business, you can certainly study there as well. The campuses that you see in blue are Rome, Paris, and Limerick, Ireland, which are available for undergraduate um, study abroad purposes. So if you have questions about that, definitely let me know. Here's just a breakdown of some of our numbers. So overall, in every campus total, we have 17,000 students, 17 to 1 student to factory ratio, 47 different states and 123 different countries represented on our campus. So there's a lot of different students from many different areas that we have coming to our school. And we have over 180 different organizations, 17 division one sports programs, and over 100 different majors. This is just a quick breakdown of the schools that we have within, I mean, the colleges that we have within our university. So we have College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences, our College, College of Professional Studies, St. John's College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, School of Education, and our Business School. So you can see here, we have honors programs available. If you, if you apply, you automatically are considered for our honors program, so don't have to worry about putting in a separate application. For double majors and multiple degree options, you can't apply to that as an incoming freshman, but we have a handful of options available to you. And if you have questions about that, you can certainly ask. Living on campus. So being that you're all from Las Vegas, <laughs> I would think that you will be living on campus if you come to New York. So we have suite style living for the majority of our buildings which are four rooms in a suite, single, double, triple, or quad. Each end of the wing has a bathroom, which I think is pretty cool. So you have two different bathrooms within that. And we do also have traditional style, but only two of our buildings are traditional style. And that is for two of our four freshman buildings, which is just a bathroom in between one room and another room. As I mentioned before, we're division one in athletics. So this is the sports that we have. Unfortunately, we are a basketball school. We don't have football. I know sometimes that makes people sad. But we do play at Mad Square Garden, so I think that's pretty cool. And everything is free to attend on campus. And this is just a list of club intramural sports if you have any interest in that. Studying abroad. So here's some of our staple programs. The first one you see here, Global Passport, is our freshman program. So you can go away your freshman year to Rome and Paris for seven days at the end of the semester. Our most popular one is Western Europe semester, where you actually go to each of the campuses I mentioned before for five weeks. You take two courses in each country, and you continue on from there. And if you want to go outside of Europe, you have uh, Costa Rica, Colombia, and a lot of other places you can go as well. Internships and career services. We have a 94% employment rate out of our 17,000 students. Here's just a quick little rundown of places that students are interns. So if you see the variety from sports to media to healthcare, um, I think a lot of the, the numbers that you see, 94% does come from our internship program. So that's a good thing as well. Our application requirements. We are test optional fully this year. So we, we are typically test optional to begin with, but now every single major is test optional. Um, the average GPA is a 3.5. If you do want to submit test scores, the average test score is a 1200 or a uh, 25 for the ACT, and we do super score. We do ask that you send in two letters of rec, personal essay, and we do offer um, more points on your application for a resume. So if you have a resume, definitely send it in. Here's just some of our application deadlines. So we have early decision, Early action, which is the one that's the most popular. So early action is December 1st, and then you'll hear back around January 15th. 
anything after December 1st is just rolling admissions. So we read your application as it comes in. And the only two programs with a hard deadline, pharmacy and bioptometry, which is February 1st. Merit scholarships are automatic for us, ranging from 5,000 all the way up to full tuition. The ones that you see with the deadline has a separate application. The merit is automatically part of your application process. So no worries about that. And then lastly, here we have our tuition in Queens, which is $43,000, Staten Island tuition about 30,000, and our room and board average is 17,000 for each campus. And then we have an open house coming up this Saturday and Sunday. So if you wanna join, definitely let me know and reach out. And my last slide here, if you do want to take any virtual visits, see what the campus looks like virtually, we do have a lot of videos available to you. So you can definitely just go to stjohns.edu backslash visit and reach out. And then we also have my contact information there if you have any questions. But with that being said, I want to pass over to Baton and hope that you guys enjoy the rest of the fair. Thank you so much, Anthony. Next up, you're going to hear from Hofstra University. Hi everyone, it's so nice to be here with you tonight. My name is Jane and I am the person in Hofstra's Office of Admission who has been lucky enough to travel to Nevada and specifically to Vegas and Reno and visit high schools. Um, so I wish I could be there with you in person, but since that's not gonna happen, this is certainly the next best thing. So some quick facts to get you acquainted with the university. Hofstra is a medium-sized comprehensive university. Our undergraduate population is approximately uh, 6,500 students. If you then in, add in our graduate students, Hofstra also has a law school as well as a medical school. Our total population is about 12,000. Our class size is super small, averaging out at about 21 and classes are capped or maximized at 35. So offering you a very small student to faculty ratio, um, all classes at the undergraduate level are indeed taught by faculty members. So we choose not to use graduate assistants or teaching assistants in our classes. And students at Hofstra come from uh, right now, 48 out of the 50 states and a multitude of different countries around the world. So just like St. John's, we also are located in New York. Uh, we are a mere 25 miles east of New York City. And we also are about 15 miles east of John F. Kennedy JFK Airport. We certainly uh, love our location. We utilize New York City as a great classroom, as an extension uh, for our students for certainly both academic as well as extracurricular pursuits. Yet we are located in a very suburban residential setting. Our campus is about 240 acres large. It's a registered arboretum and it's the largest outdoor sculpture garden on Long Island. So it's certainly an attractive piece of property, kind of looks like a park. Uh, nothing is more than a 10 minute walk away and campus is exceedingly foot friendly, meaning you're going to be walking around to get from point A to point B. Um, to use a local equivalent that may resonate with you, our campus is a bit more suburban than UNLV. I would move that a little bit more to the urban end of a setting. Um, and certainly we utilize New York City for internships. Um, the average Hofstra student does 2.3 internships during their time with us. Don't ask me how you can do 0.3 of an internship, um, but regardless, uh, at about 71% of our students do at least one internship. Hands-on learning um, and learning in a practical way are definitely Hofstra hallmarks. So this is our list of more than 165 different majors. It's not meant to give you eye strain, um, but rather just to show you the depth and breadth of our academic offerings at the university. Our different majors are then broken down or housed in different schools or colleges within Hofstra. So for example, there is a School of Communication, there is a College of Liberal Arts, a School of Engineering, et cetera. Some new programs that you won't find on this list that will be starting in fall 2021 will now be a brand new Bachelors of Science in Nursing, 
we will offer a BFA in film in addition to our longstanding BA in film, as well as a BA in screenwriting. And brand new will be a BBA, Bachelor's of Business Administration in Sports Management. So certainly you're gonna spend time in classes uh, at whatever university you end up at, but there certainly are lots of other things to do outside of the classroom. And you wanna have a nice healthy balance between academics and non-academic pursuits. Certainly the vast majority of students who come to Hofstra are living on Hofstra's campus. About 82% of our students reside with us and housing is guaranteed for all four years. We certainly have many, many students who are interested in community service. And amongst our 220 different student run clubs and organizations are things like student government, Greek life, uh, clubs that revolve around particular majors. Um, and we also offer 21 division one athletic programs. So if we were at a college fair, you'd be asking me a little bit about what are, what are your average SAT scores or what is your average GPA? Um, so you can see on the slide uh, those numbers for you. Please know that Hofstra has been a test optional institution since 2014, and it certainly will be no different for us reading applications this year than it has been for the last six years. And last but not least, here certainly is my contact information. Feel free to take a screenshot. I'm always happy to help you with questions. And I will be doing some virtual visits at high schools in Las Vegas uh, toward the early part of November. So I very much hope to get to see some of you virtually there. Thanks so much and enjoy your evening. Thanks so much, Jean. Um, and just a reminder to our audience, don't forget you can put those questions in the Q&A box below. Next up, you're going to hear from McAllister College. All right, great. Thank you so much. Hopefully everyone can see my presentation. I'm assuming so. Uh, my name is Ben Kaufman. I'm one of the assistant directors of admission at McAllister College. I'm a Mac grad, class of 2016, and really excited to have you folks here uh, for this session. Do want to give a shout out to my colleagues who presented before me and who will be presenting after me as well. Some really fantastic schools in the room here. So I'm here to talk about McAllister College, which is a small, private, liberal arts and sciences college located in St. Paul, Minnesota. And at McAllister, students really do experience the best of both worlds an inspiring academic program of liberal arts and sciences education, combined with the energy and opportunities of the Twin Cities of St. Paul and Minneapolis. Our academics are ranked in the top 20 in the United States with small class sizes, individualized attention, and collaboration serving as the pillars of the student experience. Students will work closely side by side with professors, not just inside the classroom, but also on stage, in laboratory settings, on study abroad experiences or in more than 60 courses that we offer each year that will partner you directly with a Twin Cities organization or business. Uh, ranging in your courses from first year experiences to your capstone experiences, intellectual exploration really is the foundation of a McAllister education. And on campus, McAllister draws students from every corner of the globe with nearly 2,100 students coming from 98 different countries and from all 50 states. Our students find richer discussions and a deeper understanding of the world through experiences both inside and outside of the classroom. And in addition to that, in order to contribute to lasting friendships and a strong sense of community on campus, there are over 100 student organizations where our students enjoy shared interests, express their identities, and expand their talents as well. These student organizations reflect the diverse interests of our students and range in focus uh, from a variety of different things such as art, comedy, cultural groups, dance groups, forensics, gaming, investing, and Mac radio, which I was a part of during my time as a student, all the way to things like musical ensembles, political groups, religious groups, rocketry club, slam poets, and software development, just to name a handful. McAllister has 19 varsity athletic teams, as well as club and intramural sports. We are at the division three level, and our athletic and wellness complex includes a large fitness center, indoor track, gymnasium, natatorium, field house, and more. Uh, fun fact about being in Minnesota is in the wintertime, you will need all of these indoor resources to train and prepare for your athletic seasons. And our athletic teams frequently earn the highest cumulative GPA in the nation for Division Three sports. 
We have some core values at McAllister, namely internationalism, multiculturalism, and service to society, which are the values that shape the McAllister experience, shape our campus culture, and really empowers our students to create positive change and to make a difference in the world. The United Nations flag has flown on campus since 1950, and student-led social movements have been happening since the 1960s, both of which symbolize McAllister's commitment to a curriculum and set of values and a way of life that are made stronger through the diversity that we have on our campus. McAllister's robust financial aid program supports the enrollment of bright, talented students from around the world. McAllister provides financial aid package that is equal to 100% of demonstrated need for every student that we have on campus, highlighted in the big orange bar at the bottom of the slide there. Two out of every three McAllister students receive need-based financial aid, and we also provide significant merit-based scholarship. About half of our students receive merit scholarship each year. The best preparation for applying to McAllister is a balanced and rigorous high school curriculum. Uh, we do find it important to take classes in all five academic core subjects. That would be English, math, history or social studies, laboratory science, and world language uh, for as many years in high school as you can. And if available, honors courses, advanced placement, and international baccalaureate courses are also recommended if they're available at your school. McAllister evaluates each applicant's record in their high school context, paying particular attention to an applicant's curricular opportunities and resources, factors such as academic performance, teacher recommendations, essays, leadership experience, and extracurricular involvement are all thoroughly reviewed by the admissions committee. Uh, standardized test scores are not required for admission. We are a test optional institution. Uh, but if you want to submit your scores, we will, of course, review them as one piece of the entire application file. And finally, to give you some other bonus facts and figures, about 37% of the U.S. domestic students identify as students of color. One out of every six students on campus is an international student. They represent 98 different countries around the world. More than 50% of our students will conduct research by the time they graduate, high-level research, and 80% of our STEM majors will conduct high-level research by the time they graduate. About two-thirds of our students will complete an internship for academic credit by the time they graduate. A uh, large reason for these resources being available is that we are one of very, very few small liberal arts and sciences colleges at a selective level located in an urban area in the Twin Cities of Minnesota where we are. 60% uh, of our students will study away for more than one semester. And overall, there's a deep focus on collaboration and exploration, not just academically, but professionally, personally, and, and as a community as well. And that really does summarize Mac in five or six minutes. And uh, thank you all for listening. Enjoy the rest of the evening. I will pass it along to my next colleague. Thank you so much, Ben. Um, next, we have the pleasure of hearing from Marymount Manhattan College. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining me this evening. Um, tuning in from the west uh, from the east coast so it's nice to um, be meeting with students from the west coast my name is Alexis McPadden I am an admission counselor here at Marymount Manhattan College I'm also a 2018 alum I double majored in business and communications while studying at Marymount um, and I am so excited to share more information about the college with you this evening so um, just some quick facts about Marymount. We were founded in 1936 as an all-girls Catholic school. We are now uh, non-denominational and uh, co-ed, so um, no religious affiliation and a co-ed college. Um, about 75% women, 25% male, um, and we are located in New York City on the Upper East Sides. Um, we currently have 1900 students studying at Marymount um, and those students are from 49 states and Puerto Rico and 33 countries. Our uh, student to faculty ratio is 11 to 1 um, and we do offer 31 majors and over 45 minors for students to choose from. Full-time faculty with PhD is 90%, um, so you are being taught by professors with their highest degree. No TAs at Marymount, um, no TAs will be teaching any of your classes. 82% of students, uh, first year students do live on campus, 65% of tran transfer students live on campus. We currently have over 50 student run organizations on campus. And then one thing we always like to highlight is we are very flexible with transfer credits. Um, so if you're in any dual enrollment programs or if you're taking IB uh, courses or AP courses, many of those um, classes will transfer over as college credit. On the right of the screen, you can see the map of Manhattan. Um, so the three 
uh, blue parts that are our, those are our academic buildings. So we have Marymount on 71st Street between 2nd and 3rd Avenue. That's where all of your academic classes will happen. And then we have two residence halls, 55th Street, which is a 16 block walk from campus that houses all, uh, all of our first year students. And then Cooper Square is our upperclassmen residence hall down in the East Village. Housing is guaranteed all four years. Um, however, it's not required any of the years. So if you want to live on campus, you can do that. If you don't want to live on campus, you don't have to. Um, as I mentioned before, we have 31 majors and 45 minors for students to choose from. Um, it's very easy to mix and match at Marymount. As I mentioned, I was business and communications double major. We have students that are double majoring in uh, ballet, getting a BFA in ballet, and also getting a BS in biology. Um, we have students that are double majoring in speech pathology and audiology and business to one day run their own speech pathology clinic. So there's ways you can double major. Um, you can actually triple major at Marymount and also triple minor. So if you have lots of areas of interest, uh, Marymount may be the right school for you. Uh, we like to say that at Marymount, we give you the city edge. So New York City is quite literally your campus. You're going to start your first semester off at Marymount by taking a class called New York City 101. That teaches you how to get a Metro card, how to refill your Metro card, what trains to take to get to what neighborhoods, um, and it's all within an academic setting. So if you're interested in New York City history. Our history class is called Eating New York. Once a week with your class, you're going to different neighborhoods, you're eating the food that's local to that neighborhood, and then learning about the history and immigration patterns um, and why certain areas are more densely populated. Uh, it's a really fun class. Students love that class. It's taught by an academic advisor. Um, so it teaches you not only how to live in New York, but also how to go to college in New York. Students can do up to five internships for credit at Marymount. Um, you are in New York City, which happens to be the capital for many companies. Um, internships are a huge aspect. They're not required, but students do take full advantage of those internship opportunities. And we have students interning um, anywhere from the United Nations. We do have a program with our international study students. Um, they have the opportunity to intern at the United Nations. Um, we have students interning at SNL, Dr. Oz, daytime talk shows, um, fashion companies, anywhere you can think of Marymount students have interned. We also have lots of famous um, theater and dance alum. Uh, most notably, we have Annalee Ashford from our uh, musical theater program. We also have um, Laverne Cox as well. Um, so lots of famous alum that have gone through Marymount and who's to say that you won't be the next one. Um, some important dates, stats, and requirements. So as you can see, these are our admission plans. We have early decision, which is binding, um, early action, which is what most students will apply with, get everything into us by December 1st, you'll have a decision by December 21st, and then the enrollment deadline of May 1st. For our incoming class stats, um, I will mention we are test optional for the upcoming school year. So your test scores um, will be looked at as one piece of your whole application if you do so decide to submit them. Um, if you don't decide to submit, we take a holistic approach um, and we will review your application as such. First uh, year average academic GPA 3.6, that is a weighted GPA. Average SAT is an 1100 and average ACT is a 24. Um, we do have different application requirements. So we're either on the MMC com, uh, application or on the Common App. We do need your high school transcript, one letter of recommendation, your essay, and then the application fee. Average cost to attend Marymount for students living on campus, tuition and fees, 37,410, room and board, 18,894, bringing the cost of attendance to 56,304. Um, for a New York City school, we are on the more affordable end of things, um, and we do also offer uh, comprehensive scholarships for students. 95% of our students do receive aid. And then lastly, we welcome you to stay connected. Um, please feel free to take a screenshot of this and I am going to hand it off to my next colleague. Thank you. Thanks, Alexis. Our next presenter will be Bard College. Hello, everybody. My name is Colrit Greathouse and uh, I represent Bard College on the West Coast. So Bard is a private college for the public good. 
And what that means for us is that we have a national and international network of campuses and programs uh, supporting our work in environmental and social justice, as well as access to education. So we do this work on a local, national, and global level. And beyond education, we're also preparing and providing opportunities for students to engage in the same work. In fact, we were the first college in the country to offer a major in human rights, as an example. Um, and two examples of the ways that we put our money where our mouth is that I like to share are um, seemingly unrelated. So number one, we have two farms and an orchard on our campus, which you can see here on the map, that supply more than 20,000 pounds of produce annually to our dining halls and community farm stand, as well as uh, donations to local food banks and shelters. And then the second example that I like to bring up, which you can't see here, is we have the largest degree granting prison education program in the US called the Bard Prison Initiative. And what these two examples have in common is that they were both started by Bard students. So these are just two of the myriad ways that you can make an impact um, within BARD and through BARD out in the world. Uh, our students tend to be characterized as uh, oriented towards social justice and civic engagement. So that's something that um, is really important in terms of our institutional identity as well as the identity of our students. We have about 1900 undergraduate students on a thousand acre campus in the historic scenic Hudson Valley of New York. So everyone gets about a half acre when they arrive. Um, and we have a nine to one student faculty ratio. Our average class size is 12. And our student faculty ratio is actually the same as our student to club ratio. So there are lots and lots of ways to get involved on our campus. Um, so I'll just share with you, uh, I mentioned briefly that we are a part of a larger network. I mentioned the prison initiative program, which is a part of that network. If you're interested in learning more about that, we have um, uh, a documentary that was co-produced by Ken Burns and PBS. And that came out about a year ago called College Behind Bars. It's available on um, PBS Learning Media. If you have, uh, well, anyone has access to that, it's public on the website. But if you have access to um, Netflix or Amazon Prime, you can also view it there. Again, it's a four part series called College Behind Bars. So definitely check that out. We also have a network of high school early colleges around the US. Uh, those are public high schools where students get their associates degree as well as their high school diploma from Bard, which they can take anywhere. And then we have um, a sister campus called Bard Simons Rock in Great Barrington, Massachusetts, where students get their high school diploma and a bachelor's degree from Bard. It's a hybrid um, program there. And then an international network as well. Uh, the largest Russian American education collaboration with the Smolny Honors College at the University of St. Petersburg, Bard College Berlin in Germany, its own full-fledged liberal arts college. Um, we have a partnership with the uh, Central European University and we're co-founders with them for the Open Society University Network, which is uh, a network of programs and institutions working to uh, continue to increase access to the liberal arts in the world, um, not just in the United States. And we recently received a billion dollar grant across the BARD network to continue that work. And um, we also have the largest Palestinian American education collaboration with Al-Quds University in the West Bank and a partnership with the American University of Central Asia. So lots of opportunities to study abroad. Uh, about half of our students have an international experience, but you are not limited to the network in order to study abroad. You could go pretty much anywhere. Um, but I like to sort of highlight that as um, just the living proof that we are a private college for the public good. So we offer academic programs in four different degrees, um, or different divisions, excuse me, zooming back into our, our main campus in New York. And those are in the arts, languages and literature, STEM fields, and social studies. And it's important to note that not only are all of our classes taught by uh, full-time faculty with terminal degrees in their field, um, but our faculty are not sorted into boxes. Our faculty teach courses based on their current work and interests and passions, and then um, they're loosely organized into the division. So you'll notice on this next slide, um, we have more programs under the interdivisional list than any other division. And that's because so many students do double or joint majors and create these incredible hybrid programs, like the example I mentioned before in human rights. And uh, so lots going on in terms of the interdisciplinary liberal arts vibe. Uh, just a few facts and figures for those who are interested in that. Um, about a fifth of our student body comes from outside the United States and another fifth comes from the West Coast. So you would not be alone in coming to BARD. In fact, California alone is the second highest represented state on our campus. So a lot of students coming from the West Coast. 
Um, some other things to mention are um, we have our residential campus primarily, we have uh, guaranteed on campus housing for all four years. We require it for the first two. So once you declare your major, you have the option of, uh, of moving off campus. Um, we're on the Common App. Early deadline is November 1st, regular deadline is January 1st. And I wanna just highlight the immediate decision plan as an immersive application experience. So if you're interested in applying early, uh, this is an opportunity for you to have a, not only a campus tour, but a seminar with faculty. There is required reading before you start. Um, and then we also have an interview with an admission counselor and we give you a decision on your application by the next business day. So from here, I'm gonna pass it off last but not least um, to our final institution. Thank you so much. Thanks so much. And our final presentation tonight will be Carleton College. Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Trevor Lewis, and I'm from Carleton University, actually. Uh, there was a Carleton College in Minnesota that we're often um, confused with. Uh, that's not me. Uh, I'm from Carleton University in the nation's capital in the city of Ottawa. And uh, before I get started, I just wanted to say that Carleton University acknowledges its location and its campus from the traditional unceded territories of the Algonquin Nation. Uh, the city of Ottawa is the nation's capital. Uh, we are around an hour to an hour and a half north of the uh, New York State, uh, in between Toronto and Montreal. Uh, the city of Ottawa is a cosmopolitan center with over uh, over a million people uh, and it's very much a, a, a place where uh, similar to Washington DC as I was trying to reach for there uh, where you see government and you see uh, politics and, and public relations and that kind of thing that dominates uh, the landscape of, of our city. This is a look at our campus. We're 31,000 students. Uh, all of these buildings are linked by three miles of underground tunnels. And uh, you might need that because it's a little bit colder in, in Ottawa, as you would as suspect, uh, in, in Canada. So um, we are a comprehensive university as well. And we are in the heart, as I said, in the, of the nation's capital. Um, we have uh, over 150 nations represented on our campus. Um, we are a supportive, collaborative community with championship teams and facilities. Um, we have an Olympic-sized pool, we have an indoor field house, we have uh, indoor tennis, and of course a double, uh, double ice pad for hockey because we're Canadians after all, and that's important for us. <laughs> and, but we, uh, we do own the sport of basketball in Canada, having won the national championship in our country 15 of the last 18 years. So we are the hoop school and we, we own that sport. Um, with respect to academics, our academics span five faculties. Uh, first, the arts and social sciences that you'll see here, uh, including a, a music program. Global and international studies and politics really plays well in the nation's capital, as you would imagine, as it would in DC as well. And that ranges over into the public affairs faculty. We are the oldest school in journalism in Canada. So we see our grads in, in journalism everywhere, uh, just about everywhere in the world. Um, we also have a, a, a top ranked engineering school with an architecture school, uh, as well as 13 streams in the school of engineering, including aerospace engineering, as well as mechanical engineering. Hands on experience is important and our students build and race a Formula One race car every year. Uh, we have a large science school, including health sciences. Mandatory laboratory research is, is a prerequisite to uh, from year one on to study in the School of Science at Carleton. Uh, over to the Sprott School of Business, two degrees. One of them is the International Business Degree Program, which has a mandatory uh, international study abroad component, and our students go all over the world to do that. Um, of course, everything's virtual right now, so I just want to promote some of the ways that you can get more information uh, now. Uh, every Wednesday night, we're doing Live at Five for select topics in the academic, uh, academic faculties that I just mentioned. We're also doing something called the Talking Raven podcast. We have the Carlton Ravens after all, as you can see on my shirt here. Uh, and Stanley, my man in the center, is doing a podcast on Spotify every, uh, every week, as well as a coffee break with a recruiter. And we will do that whenever you want. Uh, you go to admissions.carlton.ca to meet with one of our team uh, anytime you like to get your questions answered. That's been very, very popular. 
um, get a view book, um, get it in your hands. Uh, it's a nice way to, to, uh, to get more information. We'd love to send you one. And you can go to 360.carlton.ca to sign up for all the things that we're going to be doing and all the ways to stay in touch with us. And um, last but certainly not least, um, these are all the ways you can find us on our social and the websites that I had just mentioned. Uh, one of the major selling points for, for American students coming up to Canada is it's extremely cost effective. Uh, our, our price for tuition ranges between 23 and 25,000 US for the year. Um, so that's very attractive. Uh, and for another 10, you can live on the campus. It is not mandatory, but 3,500 students live on the campus as well. Uh, that's all I have for now. Thank you very much for sharing your time and uh, thank you to all the other participants as well. Trevor, I sincerely apologize. Um, Carleton University, I'm, I'm so sorry. Um, no worries. Thanks to everyone tonight for joining us. Um, we really appreciate your attendance tonight in this webinar. Uh, I'm sure you learned lots of great things. I know I did. Uh, when you close this window tonight, you'll be uh, given a link to a short four question survey. So I hope that you provide some feedback if you have any. Also, this was just one of the many sessions being offered. So be sure to sign up for additional sessions. In about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording along with any of the other sessions that you might be interested in on the website where you registered. Thanks so much everyone and have a great night.